We are looking today at the Gospel of Mark, and I'm also going to read in the Gospel of John. I'm going to read through these two passages. which talk about the, the trial of Jesus before Pilate, the governor, The title of this sermon is Pilate the Governor Pressured to Condemn Jesus to Death. And the sermon texts are Mark chapter 15 verses 1 through 15 and John 18, 28 through chapter 19 verse 16. And I will read this. And then after I read, we will talk about what has, what has happened to Jesus. This is, this is the true account of what our Savior, God the Eternal Son, manifest in the flesh as a human being, what he went through. Mark 15, verse 1. Peter has just finished denying Christ. He denied him three times. And Jesus, as he was walking in the building that was above the courtyard, looked at Simon, and Simon looked at him, and he remembered, and he came to his senses, what he had just done. He said he would never do it, but he did. And he went out and, and bitterly wept. And immediately in the morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council and bound Jesus and carried him away and delivered him to Pilate. Pilate was the Roman governor in charge of that whole area. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered and said to him, It is as you say. And the chief priests accused him of many things, but he answered them nothing. And Pilate asked him again, saying, don't you speak to me? Don't you answer? Listen, how many things they say against you. But Jesus still answered nothing, so that Pilate marveled. Let me interrupt now. We will see that at a certain point, Jesus breaks his silence, and he talks to Pilate. But not yet. We will see that in John's account. This is why it's good to read the parallel accounts in the different Gospels. We get the full picture. Verse 6, Mark 15, verse 6. Now, at that feast, he released to them one prisoner, whoever they desired. This was the custom. And there was one named Barabbas, 
who lay bound with them that had made insurrection, rebellion, and who had commurdered, committed murder in the rebellion. And the multitude, crying aloud, began to desire him to do as he had ever done for them. And Pilate answered, Will you that I release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that the chief priests had delivered him because they envied him. They envied Jesus because the people loved him and Jesus spoke against them. But the chief priests moved the people that he should rather release Barabbas to them. And Pilate answered and said again to them, What will you then I should do with him, whom you call the king of the Jews? And they cried out again, Crucify him. And Pilate said, <clears throat> Why, what evil has he done? And they cried the more exceedingly, Crucify him. And so Pilate, willing to make the people content, released Barabbas to them and delivered Jesus when he had scourged him to be crucified. Now I'm going to the Gospel of John, verse 18. A, a scourging is a form of torture that they did to, to, to wicked, the worst criminals, and also to those who would be crucified. It had a handle about this big, made out of wood, and he grabbed it, and it had leather strips, like ropes, on the end. And at the end of each one of those was a piece of metal or sharp stone, brass, bone, sh with sharp edges on it, and they would, they would whip the person across the back, and it would tear open their backs. It was very cruel. Sometimes people died. Sometimes people died from a scourging. It could open the back, and you could see the, the organs on the inside of a person. Now I'm reading John chapter 18 starting in verse 28. We begin to the same place we began with the last one. Then they led Jesus from Caiaphas, who was the high priest, to the hall of judgment, where Pilate was. And it was early. And they themselves did not go into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. Now, just to comment here, they would be ceremonially defiled if they went into the home of a Gentile. And they didn't want to be defiled according to ceremony. But they didn't have a problem taking God the Son and falsely accusing Him and putting Him to death. They cared about their rules in the temple, but not about true justice, real defilement. Pilate then went out to them and said, what accusation do you bring against this man? I'm going over the same material I just went over, but with much more detail in John. They answered and said to him, if he were not an evil man, we would not have delivered him up to you. 
Then said Pilate, Take him and judge him according to your law. The Jews then said to Pilate, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death, that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spoke, signifying what kind of death he should die, that is, crucifixion. Jesus prophesied that. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered and said, Do you say this thing of your own, of your own self, or did others tell you this about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. Pilate therefore said to him, Are you a king then? Jesus answered, You rightly say, I am a king. To this end I was born, and for this cause I came into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again to the Jews and said to them, I find no fault in him, no fault at all. But you have a custom that I should release to you one at Passover. Will you therefore that I release to you the king of the Jews? They cried again, all of them, saying, not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Therefore, Pilate took him and scourged him. This scourging was done by the, the Praetorian Guard, the soldiers. We'll talk about the Praetorian Guard in a moment. And they scourged him. And the soldiers twisted a crown of thorns and put it around his head. And they put on, on him, Jesus, a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they beat him with their hands. Pilate, therefore, went forth again and said to them, Behold, I bring forth to you that you may know that I find no fault in him. Then came Jesus, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, and Pilate said to them, Behold the man! When the chief priests, therefore, and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, You take him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him and said, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself to be the Son of God. When Pilate therefore heard this saying, he was more afraid. And he went again into the judgment hall and said to Jesus, From where are you? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then Pilate said to him again, Do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to crucify you and have power to release you? Jesus answered, You could have no power at all against me, except it were given you from above. Therefore, those that have delivered me to you have the greater sin. From that time on, Pilate sought to release him.
But the Jews cried out, saying, okay, now listen to this, what they said to him. This, this changed Pilate's mind because he was afraid. He was afraid that he could get in trouble with Caesar. From that time forth, Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, saying, If you let this man go, you are not Caesar's friend. Whoever makes himself a king speaks against Caesar. Verse 13. When Pilate therefore heard this saying, he brought Jesus forth and set him down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the preparation of the Passover and about the sixth hour. And he said to the Jews, Behold your king. And they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Verse 16. Then he delivered him to them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. This is the word of God. Next week we will, Lord willing, look at the crucifixion and what that was about and what happened. What happened to Jesus when he was on the cross? What we're going to do now is look at some of these things that happened. We read about them from two accounts, from the Gospel of Mark and from the Gospel of John. These are some of the things that Jesus suffered. And I want to make a contrast between two views of Jesus. He suffered mocking. They beat him and they hit him. They would put a cover over his face and they would hit him and say, prophesy, who hit you? They treated him like dirt, like the worst, like, like a, worse than a criminal. And then, after this indignity, scourging with the, this terrible kind of a, a multi, a multi uh, corded whip, indignity, if somebody were to come up here and to, to hit me in the face, that would be an indignity because it would be an insult. They treated Jesus much worse than this just simple, much worse than the simple uh, slap in the face. And I, and I want to show you another view of Jesus. This is, Jesus is, is the one of whom John the Baptist said, I am not worthy to untie his shoes. To, to untie the, the shoes, the sandals, of an owner or a, uh, a person, a family member in the, in the house. It was the lowest of the servants 
who would do that job. John said, this one, speaking of Jesus, is so high and glorious, I can't, I'm not even worthy to do and tie his, his sandals. He offered him great respect and honor, whereas these others treated him awfully, terribly. I want to go through the different people that we see in these two accounts that I've read. We call them actors, the people that were, that had a part in this drama, but true story. This is a true account. These are biographical accounts of the life of Jesus Christ and things that happened by eyewitnesses. We will, we will get to Jesus last. Pilate. He was a Roman governor. He hated the Jews. They always caused him trouble. They would accuse him to Caesar. Caesar was his boss, trying to get him in trouble. And sometimes they could do this. And he hated them and he feared them because if they reported him in a way that was not legal for him or was against the, the rules, the laws of Caesar, Pilate could lose his job, lose his, his, his living. He knew Jesus was innocent. He knew it. They had nothing really against him. He knew because Jesus was not unknown to Pilate. Often Jerusalem was filled with rejoicing and, and all sorts of events. The news of Jesus came to Pilate and he knew that the Jews envied him. The people loved him, but the Jews hated him. In this last thing, we just read that when they said, if you, if you let him go, you are not Caesar's friend, because whoever makes himself a king speaks against Caesar. When Pilate heard this, he said, they're going to report me. Even though I know this man is innocent, I will convict him of such a crime that he is to be crucified. He was a coward. He yielded to fear. He was willing to be unjust in his judgment. The Jewish leaders now. That was Pilate. This is the Jewish leaders. They had a murderous hatred of Jesus. They envied him. He did these miracles that they could not deny. Everybody in Jerusalem was a witness. He raised Lazarus, who was well known in Jerusalem, he raised him from the dead. They would even kill Lazarus if they could. They wanted to. These Jews, they said that they followed the laws of Moses, but they didn't. They didn't know the scriptures. Jesus said this a number of times. They didn't know the scriptures. They didn't understand them. They didn't live them. They followed outward laws, but not from the heart. These were not godly men. Most of them, not all of them, most of them 
had a murderous hatred of Jesus, their outward appearance, they made like they were holy. They would pray long prayers, dress fancy. They would say about the common people, these people are cursed because they don't know the law. They had reputation for being holy, but Jesus said they're not holy. And he and Jesus often criticized them. These were the leaders. He says, you're like whitewashed tombs, graves painted over with white to look clean but inside full of bones and rotting flesh. That's what you're like. You're corrupt inside and rotten inside. And they hated him, and it was true. What he said about them. These were not godly men. And then there were the people, the common people. These people were easily swayed. Many of them, not all of them, but many of them, they would, they could be manipulated. They could be moved from one view to another view easily. Yes, this is the son of David on the triumphant entry into Jerusalem. But then, when the priests say, no, he's a deceiver, they say, oh, maybe he's a deceiver. They were swayed easily. But they said this. When we get this in Matthew chapter 27, verses 24, verse 25, Pilate says, Pilate was a hypocrite, he took water and he washed his hands. I am innocent of this man's blood. But he wasn't really. But he wanted to think that he was. I am innocent of this man's blood. All the people said, this is what the scripture says, all the people, the priests, the scribes, and the common people, his blood be on us and on our children. They put a curse on themselves. His blood be on us and on our children. The Praetorian Guard. These were elite military men, elite soldiers. The toughest, the best. They were to guard the governor, Pilate. They were there in case there was an uprising to put it down. There was a troop of them in like a castle that they had in Jerusalem. They were the occupying military political force. The Praetorian Guard, they were savage. These were like bad, violent, rough men. Men of war. Men of violence. They were tough. They beat him. They insulted him. They scourged him. These are the people that Jesus was confronted by. And then there was Herod. We learn in the other Gospels that Pilate sent Jesus to Herod because Herod was also responsible for the governing of Jerusalem. Pilate was responsible for the entire territory, but the small territory of Jerusalem was Pilate's jurisdiction, we call it. He sent him to Herod. 
And the two became friends. They were not friends before that, Herod and Pilate. But Herod wanted to meet Jesus. Maybe he would show him a miracle. He sent him to, to Herod. Herod said he wouldn't even talk to Herod. Herod was an Idumean. He was not a Jew. He was a descendant of Esau. The, the, the brother of Jacob. He was a descendant of Esau. An Edomite. Ungodly. Worldly. They, mo they also mocked him. Jesus underwent all of this mistreatment and insult. But now we get to Jesus. How did he conduct himself? What was he like? And I'll, I will keep this brief. We could talk about Jesus a lot, but let me keep this brief. Jesus He had set his face like flint with, with like a, a resolve, a, a passion of steel, steel like iron, to go to Jerusalem to redeem his people. This is the passion of Jesus. Nothing could stop his purpose to go to Jerusalem to offer himself a sacrifice, an atoning sacrifice, so he could rescue his people, so he could go to the cross and pay for their sins by taking their punishment on himself. This is what we talked about before, Ramin. He would offer himself, God the Son, manifest in the flesh as a human being, the mediator, to, mediator between God and men, seeking to reconcile an offended God with wicked humankind, but suffering humankind upon whom God had mercy because God knew that some of these he would redeem and save. Christ was sent to bring the mercy of God on his elect, his chosen people. Even though he would go through such pain and agony, it's beyond our comprehension to understand it. Bearing the penalty for our sins upon himself, all of the people of God, the godly of the Old Testament, the godly of the New Testament, true Christians, born-again Christians, the wrath of God upon these, the Christians and the godly Jews, for their sins, because we Christians, we are sinners. We have committed sins, even as did ancient kings commit sins. But if they believed, if they were elect, they were chosen, they were, they still had sins that had to be paid for. Jesus exhibited calm majesty through all of this mistreatment and pain, and it gets worse. We'll look at what's worse next week on the cross. Take, take into consideration the calmness of Jesus when he spoke to Pilate 
And when he stood with dignity, even though he was beaten and spit upon, they spit upon his face. He was the king. He conducted himself with honor and majesty because he was the majesty of God. Where did he get the inner strength? This is an application now. Where did he get the inner strength to endure such mistreatment, even the scourging? Where did he get the strength to endure this? This, this strength will continue even into next week when we look at the crucifixion itself, the crucifixion and the death of Jesus, where did he get the strength? Remember, a couple of weeks ago, we spoke about Gethsemane, the place where Jesus went to pray before he was arrested. And he could see the storm, this, this storm coming at him the suffering, the mistreatment, the wrath of God that would be upon him. And he prayed so fervently that blood mingled with his sweat, capillaries in the small veins in his face burst, and he sweat drops of blood. And an angel came to bring strength, the strength of God, to the Savior. It was his praying and the strength that the angel gave him to continue praying and his then praying to the Father. And the Father gave him that inner strength, that power to endure what we've just read about and what we will read about next week. That's where he got it, from prayer. Don't think lightly of prayer. God hears you. Even if your prayers are feeble, even if they're weak, oh Lord, he hears. Even the weak, faint, poor prayers of Christians, Lord, help me. I'm in trouble. I'm not, I'm not a great man of God. You know, you know who I really am? Help me, Lord. I'm in trouble. He hears. He gives strength. I have known this for over 50 years, and I've been in trouble a lot of times when I just didn't have the strength to do what I had to do, what I was supposed to do. Please, help me. He did. He's faithful. His eye, this is in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 12, and also in Psalm 34. His eye is upon the righteous, and his ear is open to our prayer. A promise. He hears us. He answers our prayers. If you're in trouble, pray. It's that simple. He will help you. Whatever your trouble, whatever it is, He will help you. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your great mercies. Thank you that you hear our prayers and you answer them. Jesus, thank you for what you endured for us. Help us to look more closely at what you endured on the cross, Lord, bearing the wrath due to our sins. Help us. We need your Spirit to make these things alive to our hearts and minds. Thank you that you are with us. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen.